Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make button component rolls. This will be similar to the concept of reaction rolls, where you click on a reaction to give yourself a roll. But with button component rolls, we'll use the new feature of Discord, which is button components, to make a more user-friendly interface. I will be using Nextcord, which is a fork of Discord.py, and in this library you can find button components and other new interactive components. If you go to the repository for Nextcord, which is github.com slash nextcord slash nextcord, you will see that there's an examples folder over here. I definitely recommend checking these out. We've even got a folder for views, which is the component-based things. You could definitely try using these for inspiration. I definitely did for this tutorial, but let me show you how I implemented buttons for assigning roles. This spot that I'll be working on is the dev pro tip spot for my Discord server. In my server, I currently have reactions to assign roles to users, but I want to make this use buttons, so that's what we'll be doing in today's video. If you'd like to join the server, there's a link in the description. Now the first thing we'll have to set up, which I already have, is to add the IDs of all the roles to your project. Now to get an ID of a role, you have to have developer mode enabled in your settings, and then all you have to do is just go to the roles, and then you can right click and copy ID. If you're viewing a, a user, you could also right click on the roles from here and get these roles. I have put these in an ENV file. So you'll see over here, all my role IDs are over here. And my config is going to read them from this file. And now that the roles are in my code, I'm going to make a new module that will handle the button component roles. So I'm going to make a copy of this ping command. And this will be the starting point. Now in this copy, I'm going to name this button roles and inside we have the cog. I'm going to rename this to button roles. And I'm going to change the name over here to button roles. And this is going to be creates buttons that assign roles. We'll come back to the specifics of this cog later. Right now we're going to create a view that will show these buttons. So we're going to call it role view. I'm going to make it a separate file. And inside this, we're going to have a class. We'll call it role view. And it's going to have to inherit from nextcord.ui.view. We'll need to import nextcord. And then we'll make a constructor here. And inside, I'll, I'll call super to call the constructor for the view. And initialize it with timeout set to none. Now this is important because if timeout is not set to none, then after a certain amount of time, these buttons will stop working. But when we want to assign roles with these buttons, we probably want them to stay around forever. So timeout equals none is going to make these buttons last forever. Now to make a button, we we'll have to use the decorator at nextcord.ui.button, and we'll have to pass it a label. I guess this first one will be the subscriber role, and we can give it an emoji. So let's say we have the heart emoji. Take this one. We can give it a style, so we can say style equals nextcore dot button style dot. We can give it so primary, blurple, danger, red. So these are different colors options we can choose. We can make a gray button. Um, I'll just make these all primary, which is going to be the default bluish purple color. You can choose any color if you'd like. And now we're going to have custom ID over here. And we're going to have to set this to something custom. What this custom ID does is it allows us to reference the button later. And this is important if we want this to be persistent and not get destroyed after a reset. Now this custom ID, it should be something unique. So I'm going to include something about the bot's name and about this class in addition to an ID about this button. So I'm actually going to create a utils for this because I'm going to be doing this a few times. In my utils module, well, you can do this anywhere really, even in the same file, but I'm going to keep this in a separate file. I'm going to make a custom ID. It's going to take a view name, which will be a string. It'll take an ID for the button, which is going to be an integer, and it's going to return a string. So we can include the bot's name here. I can actually put that in my config file I already have my bot name as a config variable. You can include this in any file 
and this is where I have it. So I'm going to I'm go back to utils. I'm going to insert over here config dot bot name, and then we're going to have we have the view, and then we'll have the ID like this, and we'll have to import config. Okay, and now this will create a string that has the bot's name, the name of the view, and some ID number that will pass to this function. Now let's go back to this. I'm going to create my custom ID by saying custom ID. I'll give it the name of this. So I'm going to create like a variable over here. We'll say view name equals role view, and this will go in over here. And the second parameter could be well, first I'll import config so I can get some suggestions here. So this is going to be from utils. Let's see if we can import that. And then we have config dot subscriber role ID. So now this is the decorator for the first function. It's going to have a label and it's have it as an emoji, a style, and a custom ID, which we can generate with a function because it just has to be some unique string and this will create that string for us. Now we're going to have to say define a function and we'll have we'll give it the button and we'll give it the interaction. And for now, I'm just going to make this interaction dot response dot send message you clicked subscriber. We'll get around to um, doing the actual roles later, but this is going to just be to test that the bot is working. So I'll, I'll copy this a couple times. So we have a few buttons. So this will be for the developer role. We can give it the laptop icon. And then we're going to have this hand for the content creator role. And lastly, we're going to have this bell for the YouTube pinged role. And we can actually even make this use the actual button. We can say button.label over here. And then we can just copy this down to each of these. And this function returns a coroutine, so we'll actually need to use a wait before each of these. And these will need to be async functions. And now we have some buttons set up. We have to actually be able to use these. So before we finish this function, we're going to start working on how we will actually be displaying these role views. I'm going to go back to the cog over here. In order to make this persistent, we're going to have to add a listener. So I'll say commands.cog.listener, and I'm going to make an on ready. This is going to be called when the cog is loaded. It's going to be self.bot.addView, and then we're going to give it role view. And we're going to have to import this and just say from dot role view, import role view. Now instead of this ping command, maybe we want a command that will create this role view. So I'm going to say roles, and this will usually want to be a owner only role. So we can say commands dot is owner, and we'll go over here and say creates a new role view. And the way we'll do this is await ctx dot send. We'll give it a message over here. We'll say click a button to add or remove a role. We'll pass in a view will be view equals role view. And role view again is that class we created that's in this file and it has all these buttons. So when we call this line, it's going to create a view that has all of those buttons in it. So now let's try running it and let's go back to our test server and let's try running roles. So now we got the YouTube ping role at least. So let's see what went wrong. Why don't we have all of them? Uh, because we did not make custom IDs for all these. This one is supposed to be developer role ID. This one is supposed to be the content creator role ID. And this one will have the YouTube ping role ID. And we'll also need to rename these functions to all be different. So we'll have developer button, content creator button, and this will be the YouTube ping button. Now let's try refreshing this and we'll try rules one more time. And now we have our four buttons. And if we click one of these, it tells us you click the YouTube ping or you click content creator. You can also even make these ephemeral, meaning that they'll be displayed only to the user who clicked the button. 
that will avoid this annoyance of filling up a channel with button click things. So to do that, we'll just have to say ephemeral equals true. And what that will do is it'll make a message only to that user. And let me just show you what this looks like. If we click one of these buttons, you'll notice it displays the message only to me. And I can dismiss these and that's pretty cool. Now the last part is to make these buttons actually assign roles. So I'm going to make a function. I'll put it over here. I'll just call it handle click. You can call this anything you'd like though. It'll take self, button, and the interaction. I'm missing the word def over there. And if you'd like, you can specify types for each of these. It makes it a bit easier to program since you'll get type annotations. So the type for this one is next chord dot UI dot button. And the type for this one is next chord dot interaction. So now the first thing we want to do is get the actual role. So we can say role equals, well, we passed in the role ID as part of the custom ID. And if you go back to this function, you'll notice we put colons in between the three parts. So we know that the last part is going to be the ID. So what we can do is we can get the ID by saying button dot custom ID. That will give us the custom ID of the button that was clicked. We can split that up into three parts on every colon and take the last one. And now we'll want to make this an int so we can pass this into the function to give us a role. So for the role function, we'll have to get the guild. So we're going to say interaction dot guild, and we're going to say dot get role and give it the ID of the role. So that will be role ID. Now we'll make sure that this role exists by saying assert is instance role next core dot role. This part is optional, but it makes sure that if the role was none, meaning it was not able to find this role ID, there's a problem with the program, so it should just stop here and not continue. And now we'll check if the user who clicked the button has the role. If the user has the role, we're going to have to add it. If the role is in the interaction.user.roles, then we'll say await interaction.user remove roles role. And then we can send a message that says your role name role has been removed. And then if the user does not have the role, then we will have to add the role. And here we can say, you have been given the role.name role. And we also want these to be ephemeral. So let's say ephemeral equals true for both of these. And we will replace this with await self.handle click button interaction for all four of these. So now when any of these buttons are clicked, it will run this function. So now let's try this out. Now let's try clicking on the YouTube ping roll. I already had the roll, so it's been removed. And if I click it again, I have been given the roll. So I can check over here. I actually have this roll. I can add the content creator roll. And now I have this roll, subscriber and I'm given that role. And I can remove the subscriber role by clicking it again. And now I no longer have it. And that's all there is for button component roles in NextCord. I hope you found this useful. Feel free to join my server or the NextCord server and show us what awesome things you've made. The links are down in the description. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.